Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Heroes of the Storm we're going to be playing Artanis. Artanis hasn't seen a little bit of play in a few months so I wanted to try him back out, have fun with some builds, do some stuff. We're playing on Volskaya Foundry today. This is a YouTube video after all so please feel free to comment, subscribe, love the video as much as you possibly can. We do four of these per week, so eventually we're going to happen upon the character that you want to see and potentially the build that you want to see on top of that. But without further ado, the team comps are going to be Phoenix, Tyrande, Vala, Abathur, and Artanis versus Hogger, Brightwing, Nazebo, Imperius, and Tychus. Now, in case you are unfamiliar with Artanis and that masterful backwards swap right off the bat. He's gonna die, right? Looks like we're also gonna lose to Ronda though. That's unfortunate But we got 15 stacks out of that and uh, took the first kill of the game, so I'm feeling good. I am feeling good. Probably gonna make some bad decisions this game Let me tell you because that is just what we do with this character our abilities though are pretty simple pretty straightforward We are Starcraft hero after all so there's not a whole lot to us our Q is called Blade Dash, though. It is going to dash us forward, dealing damage on the outgoing and the return. So once we hit the apex of the dash, we're going to fire backwards. And that's it. That's everything. Every enemy hit reduces the cooldown on our shield overload by one second. And heroes are going to reduce the cooldown by two seconds. Now, it makes sense that we probably talk about our trait. Should have talked about it before the Blade Dash, but... Here it is, shield overload. After taking damage while below 75% health, uh, Artanis gains a 416 health shield at level 2. We get this for 5 seconds, and basic attacks lower the cooldown of shield overload by 4 seconds. Now couple that with the 1 to 2 second cooldown reduction that you're getting on your Q, uh, and you can see just how often you can have your shield up, which is Artanis' entire gimmick, having the shield literally infinitely up um, and then playing into teams who can't break his shield or CC him while he's trying to recover the shield once it's gone on cooldown um, I mean that's that's the whole nuance to playing Artanis I cannot believe I missed that that's stupid whatever goodbye uh, now our W is called twin blades just as simple as it sounds, Artanis' next basic attack is going to immediately cause him to charge a short distance and strike the enemy two times. The dash distance for Twin Blades is pretty small, but um, it is still, I'd say it's about double the melee range for the character. So, uh, you can definitely scoot a little distance while you're doing it, but... It's not going to get you out of danger, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, the dash is not big enough for you to really get places safely. Uh, it's definitely for closing the gap in melee range or in, in very close to melee range. So that's, that's what you got to be using it for. Our E ability is called Phase Prism. Fire a Phase Prism that deals 80 damage to the first hero hit, and it's going to swap Artanis' position with theirs. You can use this while you're blade dashing. So while you're using your Q, you can launch your E and whatever position you are at in your dash, your enemy is going to swap with you. So if you're good at this uh, character, you can dash backwards, throw out your phase prism, your E immediately, snag someone as you're traveling backwards and then just launch them into your team. It's a lot harder to do than a normal swap, which is just to queue towards someone and then catch them with the face prism, but that's how it works. Uh, so uh, our two ults for this character as well are pretty... Oh, I may have killed myself. No, no. Got pretty close, though. Got pretty close. Oh, boy. All right. And Hogger's not going to die. Hogger lived. Hogger actually lived and Vala died. So everything that I thought was going to happen in that fight didn't and now I'm upset um, our ults though we have two of them one is definitely going to be more pickable than the other the suppression pulse is going to be your number one uh, blinding tool that has a global range uh, but the other ult also has global so they're both globals they're both 
um, abilities that rain down from the Spear of Vadoom, which is the ship hovering in orbit every time that you play Artanis. And that's nice to know. StarCraft characters are so much cooler than literally every other... Well, maybe not Diablo. I like Diablo and StarCraft. I'm sorry. Warcraft and Overwatch can... They just take a seat. Oh my god, I can't believe he lived getting away with literally no health. But what Suppression Pulse does, it uh, it's a huge area, uh, and it's going to drop a pulse down that does a small amount of damage and blinds people for four seconds, which is insanely long if you've ever been blinded and you need to auto-attack someone to kill them. It's really, really good. 69 stacks under level one. Way to go. Never have to do anything else. Shouldn't auto-attack this guy. I guess we're going to do it, though. There it goes. Bummer. Anyway, the the blind, really, 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 really effective uh, against characters like Imperius, uh, Tychus, to some extent Nazebo. Um, anybody who needs to use auto attacks, wow, just killing everybody, huh? Way to go, team! Uh, anybody who needs to use auto attacks to do damage is going to be upset that we are using our blind on them. Uh, and the global and the cooldown is really fucking short too. It's only 40, no, it's 50 seconds, 40 mana. But I'm going to level with you right now. I accidentally fucking took the purifier beam, which is a much longer cooldown and a much more, uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's just damage and uh, it's going to be really good at forcing one person out of the fight unless they want to suck a whole lot of laser damage. So what Purifier Beam is going to do is just drop a laser from space directly onto one character, and that laser is going to follow that character around um, slowly. Now, it's not going to stay directly on top of them, because that would be busted, uh, but it doesn't move at a snail's pace either. Oh, okay, I may have swapped a little bit early. And we're fine. Everything's fine. I knew exactly what I was doing that whole time. Purifier Beam, though, uh, I guess we can look at the description of the ability, because why not? Oop. Or we could just die in the middle of the map. Oh, no. Paula, don't. Don't. Go forward. Why you go forward? You don't need that. Oh, uh, she's dead. She's totally dead. There's no way. She lived? Incredible. And I guess we're just going to get the kill, too. There you have it. That's the Purifier Beam channeling up on Nazebo, who was going to die anyway. But at the same time, I just feel good killing people with the laser. I didn't even kill it. Vala got the kill. Wow. Wow. Uh, anyway, there you can see what it does. It just it rains down upon them. 283 damage per second for 8 seconds. So that is... Roughly 16, uh, we'll round it up to 300, it's 3 times 8, it's 24, it's about 2400 damage if you can get the entire beam on that person that you are using it on. That being said, even if you can't manage to kill someone with the purifier beam, it is very good at chasing people out of the fight, or in possible positions that they don't want to be in. So. Uh, say, for instance, that Tychus is up in front of the team fight, and I don't want him to be there. Maybe we just cast our Purifier Beam on him and make him run away from us. Oh my god, we're just going to die here, aren't we? I've got the Tyrande clone trying to help me, and I'm just going to die. I'm not super sure what's happening. Maybe it was the Odin that really made that work? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess that team fight was pretty split, but I feel like me and the clone were fending off three people quite well. So why didn't anyone else on the enemy team die? Why does Tyrande still have? Why does Phoenix still have his ult? I don't know. I don't know. Now I'm gonna run in and die again, and uh, I want my team to witness me do so. 30 seconds on the Avatar clone. I think this is a perfectly good time to swap a hogger and get caught in a zombie wall and get murdered by a Tychus minigun. So, 
Probably not the best idea to do exactly what I just did there. Really just not great. Uh, part of the problem with playing Artanis, I think, is we'll call it Artanis Syndrome. You always want to go in. And in doing that, you die a lot. So, one thing to remember when you're playing Artanis is you have to be aware of the situation before you dive in. Because when you do dive in, you can't get out. And if you're going in to a situation where you're down a player or down talents or down any type of advantage whatsoever, you're probably going to have a bad time. There you have it. Now, so we don't skimp on the build discussion for the video. Did you see that swap? I mean, he didn't die, but my god, that felt good deep in my bones. Oof. Avatar just soaking bottom, trying to get that bottom lane pushed out. I can appreciate that. Really doing all that stuff for our team. What's his soak at? Let's take a look. Okay, the hotkeys don't work. 11,000. Just killing it. Absolutely killing it. Anyway, uh, the build, we're going to be, we're going to be building Q. Uh, now, why am I building Q? Because the enemy team is super scary for me standing on top of them and I just dropped my phone on the floor but I don't want them to um, I don't want them to have more time to stand there and shoot me no 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 stop leave it alone no I wanted that whatever we'll take some stacks instead um, so I can't spend forever sitting on top of the enemy uh, team like I want to if I was building for autos, um, just pure autos. So, building Q lets me kind of go in and out, do a little bit of poking, do a little bit of uh, swap attempting, trying to make things happen from a relatively safe distance um, instead of just running in and dying to the minigun, the Imperius Q, the wall, all that stuff. So there you have it. But our level one is still going to be Protector of Ire even though amateur opponents probably really, really good on this map, especially for taking all these camps, I want to scale into the late game. So we're picking up Protector of Ire for all the grouped up objective team fights. Uh, and you can see right now we're at 154 stacks. What this talent is doing though is that. Um... Oh boy. Oh boy. I just. Everything's scary. Let's keep auto attacking though. Just keep auto attacking. Tychus is down, Brightwing is down, the turret is on the ground and down. Looks like Aperius is next. We did it. Hogger's just doing whatever he's doing in the bottom lane, I guess, trying to get experience for his team, and they are making poor decisions without him. But yes, that is good. Anyway, basic attacks against enemy heroes increase Artanis' attack damage by 0.1%. Takedowns grant 1% bonus damage. So basically, every 10 auto attacks, you are going to get uh, 1% basic attack damage increase and every takedown that you get is another 1% attack damage increase. Now scaling into the late game this is going to make your auto attacks which are your main form of damage with this character do a fuck ton more and that's going to be really really good for chasing targets down killing them while they're on the run and making sure that you're doing damage while you're being survivable with the character because typically you're going to be using auto attacks more often than anything else to keep your shield up. So you're trading more efficiently the later that you scale, the more stacks that you have on your level one. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Our level four really doesn't change no matter what you're building. Uh, shield surge is going to increase shield overload shields by 75% while below 25% health. So when you get into fatal uh, damage range, your your whole body is just going to flip those shields on even harder and the enemy team is going to have even more trouble breaking through them because they react so fast. You're going to be auto attacking so much. You're going to be dashing so much and the shields are going to be so much beefier. So it's your main form of tankiness. He kind of has a, a bit of a, a garage identity once he gets uh, lower on the health spectrum which is really nice because you can bait people into making some very poor decisions. Nazebo was not going to ever get out of that purifier beam because once you sit there in ice block, you're not going to be able to last the entire duration of the purifier beam. It's, it's 
wicked good. Uh, I don't know if it's good. I, it's fun, though. I enjoyed killing him like that. We'll say that at the very least. Our seven talent is going to be Solarite Reaper. Increase the damage of the first dash of Blade Dash by 150%, which is basically going to make the first dash equal to the backwards dash. This is all of Artanis' wave clear. Uh, you are going to see right there how fast we can take out waves with the Q because of the amount of damage that we can do with our Blade Dash. Not only that, but when we're going out we're basically dealing, uh, what's the ability itself do? So 361, it's about 361 for for both outward going and backward coming damage. So if you manage to catch someone with the tip of your blade dash, you're going to do about 600 damage to them, six to 700 damage to them uh, real quick. Right there, you saw Brightwing's health go down by like 30% because she got hit with the very tip of the blade dash. It's nuts. I need to try to help my healer get away. We don't have a whole lot of peel other than our big body, but they're not going to chase us anyway because the robot is going middle and they think that they need to stop the robot from taking a fort right now, which is probably correct. Nobody else on our team is doing anything and it's a free fort for us. Ooh, yeah. 209 stacks on our level one quest, taking a couple more off of Imperius as he runs away. Our level 13 talent... We're going to be taking Templar Zeal as a fight looks to be breaking out here, dashing in, trying not to get Minigun to death, gonna hit him with the Purifier Beam, so he will just leave us the fuck alone. Oh my god, that Tyrande increase to our damage. I love that. Is that, um... I know what it's called, but I don't know what it's called. True Shot Aura, that's right. This increases our auto attack damage, right? I keep thinking something's gonna happen and then nothing happens and I'm I'm like, yeah. So 25% increased auto attack damage when she uses that um, True Shot Aura on top of our already 23%. So we're basically getting 50% more auto attack damage, which is nuts. I love that, that those two things work together like that. It's really, really good. But back to Templar Zeal. Reduce the mana cost of Blade Dash by half, and each time that Shield Overload activates, we're going to reduce the cooldown of Blade Dash by six seconds. Now, against the enemy team, um, it's going to be a little bit rough having a shield up for long amounts of time because the percentage damage from Tychus and the ridiculous amounts of damage from Imperius and Nazebo. They're making our shield less effective, to be sure. So, regardless of that, we're in for a penny, in for a pound on the Q build, and this just makes the most sense. Spell armor isn't really going to do much to save us against the enemy team. Triple strike probably could do a bit more to keep our shield up, get us some more stacks, but I want to have more blade dashing possible, and we're just going to stick with it. Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that is a little bit mitigated by our level 16 talent called Force of Will. Casting basic abilities reduces the cooldown of shield overload by 5 seconds. So, since the cooldown on this ability is 24 seconds, any time that we hit our Q, we are removing 5 seconds. If we hit our W, same thing if we hit our E. So if we hit that whole 3 uh, button combo, we just took thir or 15 seconds off of that 24 second cooldown. Not to mention the auto attacks that we're getting in between there. You can see where I'm going. Things get pretty nuts. If you pay attention down in the bottom right hand side of the, the screen right now, you can just watch that fucking beam kill so many people. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, ice blocked again into it, buddy. I am so sorry. <laughs> I just. Here, okay. Let's go back. Um, what you're gonna do. When this fight starts is pay attention to the shield timer down here. So shield overload, keep an eye on that. You're going to watch how fast the cooldown changes because of this 16 talent and our blade dashes. Pretty insane, right? Not to mention just watching that uh, purifier beam go off and kill all those people feels so good. 
Which leads me to our 20 talent. If you've taken Purifier Beam, do yourself a favor and take Target Purified. Increase the speed of the Purifier Beam by 50%. 15, 1, 5. If target beam or if the target of purifier beam dies, it automatically reacts, recasts. Wow, reading is hard. On the nearest visible enemy hero, so we got the beam to reset on all five of the enemy team's players, and absolutely slapped them into the ground. And if that's not a reason to take purifier beam, I don't know what is. Sure, it's a twenty talent. Sure, you got to play way into it, but my god. Is that just deep, deep in my bones do I feel good about that. Ah, oh, love it. This character is ridiculous amounts of fun. This build is ridiculous amounts of fun. And I've been pushed out of the victory screen by a rocket fist. So, you're welcome, Vala. It's just you on the stage taking all the glory. I think it was Abathur. No, Vala did get the, uh, the MVP. Look at that. Ah, <sighs> whatever. I got eight mercenary camps. Here's the build again in case you need it. We have Protector of Ire at level one. We had 30% point, 30.1% basic attack damage increase by the end of that game. Uh, not to mention we're getting another 25% on top of that. So we were doing about 55.1% additional damage while True Shot Aura was up with our auto attacks. Pretty fucking good, I think. Four is Shield Surge. You could see, again, in that bottom tier, or in that uh, bottom lane fight at the end, how much we got from Shield Surge saved our lives at least three times. I think three times in just that fight alone. Uh, and then Solarite Reaper at seven for some increased damage. We're going to take, probably don't take Purifier Beam unless you just really have a good plan for it. But we took Purifier Beam, uh, Templar Zeal at 13, Force of Will at 16. These are the greatest talents for keeping you alive just forever. Once you hit 16, you're basically unkillable. And then at 20, we're taking Target Purified because we took Purifier Beam at level 10. There it is, the Artanis of Artanis builds. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I will be back tomorrow. I'm not sure with what yet. I'm still looking over those, but I will see you there. Have yourself a wonderful evening.